What's up, everybody? Welcome to Habs Tonight. It's been a couple of weeks since we've had a roundtable here because, as we know, we had a really busy week last week because Kent Hughes was good to us, and I th- think Jeff Gorton was probably involved in that too. But uh, we, we're gonna we're gonna talk about trade that deadline off the top of the show. But we have a lot to get to, and just to let you guys know uh, what we're gonna get to today, uh, this is it. So the future begins now. If any of you guys have seen the Cable Guy, the future is now. Okay, so if you have it, you won't get that, but that's fine. <laughs> Um, so that's where we're going to start, uh, in a moment here, but also Kent Hughes, his first trade deadline, which we just mentioned first impressions of William Legison and Justin Barron on defense, mm-hmm. Jordan Harris getting signed by the Montreal Canadiens. A lot of chatter around him, the much, much improved play of David Savard, Jake Allen's play since returning. He's been really solid. Carey Price could be returning to the Montreal Canadiens on this very road trip that they're on right now. And then we're going to end. So make sure you stay tuned to the end because we want to get your fan involvement, your takes on this. Who else should the Habs trade this summer? I know it's a little early, but we want to get a feel for, you know, after trade deadline, where else we see, what other pieces we see moving with this Habs team? Because we've seen a few pieces move lately. Uh, four, if we include Toffoli and Ben Sherratt. But guys, let's, let's start. Let's start off the top. Uh, like I said, the future is now. We've got some pieces moving and shaping the new the new Montreal Canadiens, if you will, under Kent Hughes. But let's start with Kent Hughes and his first trade deadline. Your guys' initial reaction on his first trade deadline as general manager of the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, honestly, if I were to grade him A, B, C, D, he'd be an A for me. I'm more than satisfied with the work that he did. Uh, if you did watch our trade deadline show, you saw me have a few meltdowns. Mm. Um, I have recovered. <laughs> I'm fine. Seriously, I'm fine. Um, it sucks to lose a couple players, obviously, but if you want to get some good picks back, you do have to give away some key players. So if you take a look at losing Lecky, we got an awesome return in Justin Barron and a pick. Uh, if you took a look at what Sidney Crosby said this week, that if he was in charge of the Colorado Avalanche, he would have never made that move and he would have never moved Justin Barron because he's going to be a top pairing defenseman later on Ooh. as soon as he develops. So that's big words from Mr. Hockey himself. Um, Ben Sherratt, we all knew he was going to move. The return was pretty good. I mean, I think we're set when it's going to come to to the draft right now. And personally, satisfied with what Kent has done so far. So I'm excited to see what the uh, what the the uh, free agency is going to look like in drafting too. Mm, yeah, that's it. We we made moves for the future, right? Like you said, Deeks. And and at this point, all we can hope for is that the player development program works, right? No matter who we draft, no matter who we get in terms of prospects, as long as they're not well-developed, it's a bad trade. So we're we're in a good spot here. We have good potential. Like Justin Barron could be a top-pairing defenseman, but he needs to develop well. And we have a player development program, finally. So overall, what a beauty. Overall, I mean, we're looking good. We're looking good. And that is because in in part of the moves that other moves that uh, Jeff and, and Kent made to the personnel, like, bringing in Le Cavalier, bringing in uh, Adam Nicholas, all those guys. That's why it's going to work in the end. Yeah. Now, in terms of uh, Kent Hughes' first trade on and first impressions, because we, we actually have gotten to see William Legison and Justin Barron as of last night against New Jersey. We saw Barron play. He even started the overtime, which Anik absolutely loved, yes. uh, because Dom Ducharme would have never done that. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, me neither. Yeah, let's, let's be honest. We're in the modern era of this new Montreal Canadiens brand. And like, like, like Shaner mentioned, all the new minds that are now involved in making this come together. Let's get your first impressions guys. Cause you guys got a bit more of a taste of these players. I didn't get a chance to see the, both games in full. So William Legison, I saw a little bit of, and I thought, you know what I did see of him. He looked okay. Uh, uh, only thing I really saw was the Matthews goal. And he kind of boxed out his man on the boards. He wasn't out of position or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but what are your first impressions of these players guys? Uh, I'm honestly Legison. It's not that I'm not impressed or impressed. It was kind of like just an okay first game. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't too amazing. I mean, it was okay, which I have no problem with. Um, Give him a chance to maybe get inserted into the lineup a little bit more often, see what he can do. Is this somebody that's going to stay long-term? It's kind of hard to tell with with all the kids coming up, but I mean, if you can give him a chance to just have fun this season, show what he can do. Maybe he'll get the chance to get inserted next season. And as for Barron, um, loved his first game. I thought he was really involved. He's a good skater, great passer. Uh, and the fact that he was put 
with Nick Suzuki and Cole Caulfield as soon as, soon as the overtime started was a big surprise for, I think, all the fan base. Because like mm-hmm. you said, Deeks, it's not something that we're used to seeing from any other coach that we had. So, and that's why I say we even said himself, like it's a sign of trust from a coach to give to this kid, see what he can do. And I thought he held his own. He did a great job. So I'm looking forward to to more of Barron. And as for Legison, obviously looking forward to see a little bit more of what he can do. But so far, Justin Barron really impressed me uh, yesterday versus the Devils, especially when it was a back-to-back game. We saw the boys were a little tired and he was a breath of fresh air. Let's put it yeah. that way. That's it. It's a very small sample size that we have to base ourselves off of. But uh, yeah, Lagesson seemed relatively reliable in a sense. Uh, we, again, we didn't see too much of him just yet. But uh, Baron, man, yesterday really impressed me. He had 17, almost 18 minutes of ice time, not including the overtime. So uh, really very, very uh, impressive game. He had three shots, one hit. And, and we can see how mobile he is, right? He had no problem driving the play, getting deep in the zone. And he came back faster than you can say shit. So um, <laughs> Baron very, really, really impressed me yesterday. And I'm, I'm looking forward to what he's got in the tank. I mean, we already know he's got chemistry with Caden Gooley uh, playing together in the World Juniors. So maybe that could be an interesting pairing down the line. But for now, I'm, I'm pumped, really pumped. Yeah. That's interesting too, because and one thing I have to wonder about Legacy, I gotta wonder if, if William Legacy is a Nirvana fan because my goodness, oh my god, <laughs> look at this guy, <laughs> like, like Kurt just Lagesson. looks just like, like yeah, Kurt, <laughs> Kurt Legacy, yeah. Oh man, <laughs> legends are legends, but I, I'm like I gotta ask this guy if I got a chance someday. Um, okay, so moving on to another prospect, uh, it was speculated all weekend, and then it actually happened after Jordan Harris and Northeastern lost in the finals. In, in the NCAA. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I had people rip, ripping me on my channel because I, I watched some footage of Jordan Harris. I found everything I could on YouTube and you, you can only take so much from YouTube. But yeah. I was like, man, like some of the mobility I saw on the blue line, like his size, the way he was moving the puck. I'm like, kind of reminds me of Morgan Riley a little bit. And fans are like, really? <laughs> like, you know, he's he's five foot 11. Riley's yeah. like six foot. 220 and you know he's jordan harris has to fill out so regardless of that comparison which is way 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 too early um what did you guys make of this signing and what have you seen from so far i know it hasn't arrived here yet but he's expected to join the team and we'll get some ice time he's gonna get some playing time this kid so 21 years old what do you guys make of jordan harris uh joining the canadians Big W for Kent Hughes finally getting uh Harris to sign for a two-year uh two-year contract. And I think the biggest, the most important part of this is that he will be with the team by the end, well, before the end of the season, and he's going to get some ice time. So let the kid get a feel for what it's like so that he can bring it to training camp, show what he's capable of. If he doesn't start with the team next year, it's not the end of the world, but let him, let him practice, let him have fun, let him get a feel. And I'm really excited to see what he's going to bring to the lineup. We know what he's capable of. And I know Shane, you have a bit more info on him. So I'm going to let you, uh, Tell the fans here uh, that you're a big fan of Jordan Harris. A <laughs> uh, huge fan of Jordan Harris. I think this guy is the entire package. Uh, he's got everything. Defensive game. He was one of the best offensive defensemen in the NCAA. He he can play offense. Like he's got. He, he can put up some numbers. And from the highlights that I've seen, he's got incredible vision. You you will see highlight real passes from this guy. It's going to be beautiful. And leadership. He he had the C on his chest yeah. uh, this this season with Northeastern. So. Uh, this guy is the entire package. I am so looking forward to to his debut with the Habs. I think he's going to be a key piece to our decor for long term, no doubt. Well, that, that's kind of like I was starting to catch the buzz a little bit after watching some highlights of Jordan Harris, and, and that's why you know I kind of made that comparison, even if it's a very lofty one at this point. But you know, some fans that were reacting were kind of saying like you know a bottom six pairing guy, and if that's the case, if he's got the offensive upside that he sounds like he does is bottom six you know if we have i'm trying to think of who would be you know if we have say um i'm just drawing a blank here justin barron on the first pair yeah so justin barron and then say caden Gooley, justin barron on the first pair Mm -hmm. and then second pair you got romy uh maybe looking at my what we're going to talk about mayu at some point once that situation gets sorted out and where he fits in as a player Mm -hmm. um there's other and then jordan harris on on maybe the third pairing. I don't, I don't know who you would put with them. And thank you and Nick for doing this, but I mean, we got Matthias Norlander who we haven't really had a chance to see a full look at because of his injury. Yeah. So 
What do you guys think, though? What's your ceiling? Maybe, Shaner, I'll start with you then on that. What's your ceiling for Jordan Harris then um, in terms of point production? Because we haven't had an offensive defenseman like like since Markov that's really put up like a 60, 70 point plus season. Mm -hmm. It really depends on who stands out. Uh, I mean, Gooley, Barron, they can all produce offensively. Norlander is a more of offensive defenseman. So it depends who stands out, who, who gets those opportunities. But Harris can also provide some offense. So um, it depends on where things fall, right? Like David Saval was actually a really good offensive defenseman in the queue when he played uh, junior. And, you know, since his since he started in the NHL, he's been more of a defensive defenseman. Now, you know, <laughs> recently we've seen some of his uh, <laughs> offensive flashes pretty beautiful. But oh, yeah. I, th I yeah. think Jordan Harris, given the Martin St. Louis system, will be able to do whatever he wants in a sense, right? He'll be able to be creative and, and drive the play, even though he's in a more defensive role, because that is his biggest strength is, is really his defensive game. So kind of hard to tell right now. Yeah, I completely agree with what you said. It's going to be it's going to be exciting to see how he's going to perform into the Martin Saint Louis concepts. And you've heard it from I think it was Joel Edmondson the other night who said it's it's such a fun it's a fun game to play because you and even Romanov said it. You're mm -hmm. you're able to make the reads. You're not stuck in a system like they kept saying, and they're able to just make the play. If you pinch, you pinch, but make the play. Try your best, and you know shit happens <laughs> but it's not it's not like a stress or a pressure on the shoulder that you're seeing from the d right now like we used to see at the beginning of the season and even last year so excited for the kids to actually come up have that coaching from martin and then apply it and see see what works best for them and i'm sure that martin is going to be able to basically guide them and place them according to to what's what perfect example of that is romanov lately played 27 minutes against the leafs on saturday which was a career high and you can tell and you can see how his game has evolved in the past couple of weeks. So it's it's very promising for for the kids that we saw into the, the lineup that we posted uh, not too long ago. Yeah, and Romy also, too. I, I think uh, I don't know if it was Edmondson or one of one of the guys was saying how um, he was told he wasn't going out for the next shift or something a couple games ago. And he was mad. He's like, I want to get out there like he wants yeah. to play as much as possible. Right. So yeah. uh, we've seen a heck of a. A lot of minutes from him and, and also a lot of improved play. Every time he lines somebody up, the bell center just roars. Um, and he's he hits one clean. hit, he hits he's one hit away from 200 hits this season. Wow, yeah, it's insane. That's, he's a battering ram, and that's what we expected, right? So, yeah, um, now Shaner brought him up, and that he was our next subject. So, great segue. Uh, <laughs> much improved play from David Savard. So, in the absence of now Jeff Petrie, um, Joel Edmondson just came back recently, but. What do you make of David Savard now? Maybe like every single player is having the Marty St. Louis effect in a different way, right? And now, and now it seems like David Savard isn't stuck in a structure in a system. And now he's jumping up and pinching and rushes and scoring goals, beating William Nylander to a puck. Like, come on. So what do you guys make of David's play lately? You've got to give credit to Laurent Dauphin for that hell of a pass. If you're taking a look in slow motion, yeah. goes through oh, three yeah. different guys and reaches David Saval. So, uh, flipper at a boy. Mm. Yep. And a flip a puck. I tell you what. Uh, uh, Sorry. I Sorry. With the dad jokes today. Um, <laughs> we were talking about dad bods. So, fitting that you said dad joke. We did. Um, <laughs> no, honestly, for when it comes to David Savard, I've been very critical of his plays, uh, especially throughout the season, especially at the beginning of the season, saying that like he was an orange cone at some point where you would just skate by. It's like he wasn't even on the ice. So uh, very happy to see a different side of David Savard, a side that we were kind of used to seeing when he played for Tampa Bay. You mm -hmm. know, a little bit more offensive, but it's, like you said, Shane, also a like very defensive. So to see him pinching, scoring, and he looks happy. Got a breakaway. Have you seen him? He's <laughs> yep. yeah, I know. <laughs> There's <laughs> a breakaway. A, but I no, I'm it. I'm happy to see David Savard. It, he looks relieved ever since yeah. he came back from his injury. So that's a huge, uh, he's a key important part of this team. Whether you like it or not, we're saying we've got so many kids coming up and and all that kinds of stuff, but we're gonna need to keep some veterans at some point we're going to talk later on uh Deeks, about who should be traded and so but as much as i've wanted david saval to be on the move we're going to need guys like that to help with the kids and to make those defensive plays so 
Uh, very impressed with David Savard in this past few games. Hopefully it continues. And especially the ki kids keep coming up right now. They're going to be a great influence for him. And that's it. Like you said, he, he looks comfortable to me. He just seems like he's in the right place. He's getting the minutes that he deserves and, and, and the plays as well. Um, paired up with Romeo. I, I love that pairing. They've been, they've been really good together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, I like, like we've said for many other players, the Martin St. Louis system has given him the liberty of playing his game, not the coach's game, his game. So we see the, the difference with just about everybody. And, and it's no different with David. He's, he's a new player. It's amazing what happens, though. It just it, the effect again, and every everyone just looks like they're not afraid to make a mistake. Mm. That's the biggest difference, I think, with the entire team is that they're not afraid. So if you make a bad read, you know, you pinch in and you get burned the other way. What I love about Marty is that he's not punishing guys and just benching them, you know, right after that. So that's that's another great sign too is that these guys again they know they're probably going to make mistakes here and there, but they know they're probably going to have more success also. So that's that's so yeah. much more. So much more important. So Jake Allen, guys, uh, we're going to get into a little goalie talk right now. 49 saves the other night against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Just an absolute stud. And whatever your thoughts were on Jake Allen, what I what I said in my post game was, you know, this is why we protected him in the Seattle expansion draft, right? Like we know that he's capable of being, if we need him, a start to be a starter. He can be a yeah. starter. So uh, what do you guys make of uh, make of Jake's play as of late? Ever since Jake, he came back from his injury he's been a different beast i don't know what the hell kind of medication they gave him but <laughs> he is much better i mean um not implying obviously that he's on medication here don't take this out of context um it's okay you no know, well you know how people are someone's offended somewhere don't worry about it no oh, of course but uh no i was gonna say when you need a goaltender to steal a game for you this is hmm. exactly what jake allen did on saturday he pulled off the robbery and he allowed us to win such an, well, it's not an important game, but any game against Toronto is an important game. And we prove that we can compete with the biggest teams right now. I think that's the key part, especially when it came to Florida. You know, we're, we're able to hang around with these guys. You're not just going to roll over us like you did all season long, you know? So it's, it's a different mentality. He's involved. And what's important here is that he keeps saying, I'm, I'm not here to take anybody's place or to do anything of the sorts. I'm here to back up Carey Price. And he still thinks of himself as a backup for Carey Price, even though Carey's not even there. Hmm. So the fact that he still has that mentality to just be a leader, he said that he wanted to be part of this reconstruction and help the team get where they want to go, regardless of his role. Uh, a very, very, very important guy in the locker room right now, too. So very thankful for Jake Allen. That's how sure. can you how can you not like Jake Allen right now? I mean, this guy's phenomenal. For, how many saves again, Deeks? Say it again. Say it again. 49. 49. Oh. 49. 49. Oh. 49. 49. Disgusting. That's ridiculous. And then Against 18 yesterday. shots. 18. Yeah. That's that's even it more. It was 51 crazy. 18. Eight. Yeah, it was 51 18 in the shots. But yeah. even <laughs> yesterday, Sammy had 30 saves, the 938 uh save percentage. So both guys are doing ph phenomenal right now. And and you know, go back to the beginning of the season. That was not the case whatsoever. <laughs> uh, we were we were harping on on the goaltending pretty hard, uh, but my God, it's so reliable, and that's that's what you want out of a goaltender. It's it's to be able to put him in the net and say, okay, I know he's going to do a good job. Now it's up to the rest of the team to to score some goals and get the win, and that's what we did against Toronto. Jake kept us in the game. We scored some key goals. We won. Simple. Yeah, this is what Kerry would do for us all the time. Like it actually reminded you of like that play like, that playoff series with Toronto exactly. last year, where there there's games where you just have to steal the game, and it was Game Six. It reminded me of because out, Toronto yeah. outshot Montreal fifteen to two in overtime, and then Paul By or uh, I know it was. And then what uh, happened, Deeks? And then it was Travis Dermott who just got <laughs> traded, coughed the puck up to former Hab Sperry Kakanyemi, <laughs> and then he buried it to uh, send us to Game Seven, where we also won. Uh, no, that was I think fun. It's like uh just to touch back on it quickly it's it's a little bit of it's a stress taken away from the fans i feel and the players that after one period we don't need to swap goalies mm -hmm. it's not six zero four zero and a total domination so imagine that yeah Crazy last time thought, we right? played the devils last time we played the devils that's seven exactly what happened so and jisham got fired yeah <laughs> look at us now look, look at us now. now i still can't what believe later? that mike hoffman gold didn't go in last yeah. night either. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. 
Um, but we Anik, technically won that game. Let's put it that way. We, we basically <laughs> won without winning. Um, so you mentioned it a minute ago, Nick, because uh, there was a certain incident last night that was public, and you mentioned Toronto. So what did we do to Toronto last night or last year? Well, it was kind of like this in the first round. So <sighs> anyway, uh, moving on. No, <laughs> because the internet basically broke with that moment at the Oscars last night, but we love Will Smith. Just I'm sure like it will off. break in about two months after a first round exit. Anyways, next hey. topic. Moving on. Um, <laughs> well, we were talking about goalies yeah. and uh, we mentioned that Carey Price very well could play this week uh, or as soon as this road trip that they're on right now, which is interesting. And I think it'll be um, more like a, a lift once he's playing at the Bell Center. But I mean, again, just to see him in net will be weird, I think, at this point in the season. Yeah. Um, it'll be strange, but it'll be a, a very welcome sight, I think, for Montreal Canes fans, regardless of whatever whether whatever Carey's future holds. Um, he's a part of this team still, and um, I think I'm just excited to see him between the pipes again. It's going to be a hell of a moment for Carey, his family, and us as fans, mm -hmm. the organization. Um, don't tell me that the boys aren't going to be pumped to have him on the ice in front of them, be uh, behind them, I should say. They're already, they already said that in the locker room and even at practice, the atmosphere is different because Carey Price is present. So it's going to be fantastic to have him back. I know he's most likely more than ex more excited than us to be back. He said it all season long. This is what I'm working towards. This is what I'm so excited about. I just hope that he's not being – I know I know he's not being rushed, but he does put that pressure on himself to say, like, hey, like I want to be back yesterday, you know. So it's going to be excited. Let's get Carey in a few games this season. Don't mm -hmm. don't push him. Let him play what he wants to. And then just to get a feel and be ready to train a little bit this summer, get ready for training camp next year. Um, I don't see the need to, you know, put Carey back as a starter. Honestly, no. just let Jake and Monty handle it. Or if, if you need to send Monty down and keep Carey as a backup, let Jake handle the, most of the work. I think it's going to be fine, but very excited to see Carey back whenever it happens. Yeah. I mean, the world is a better place when Carey Price is, is a goaltender. You know, without him, it's not the same, even though we've been treated to some phenomenal goaltending from, from Jake and, and Sammy. But I mean, it's Carey Price at the end of the day. This guy is a Hall of Famer. He's going to have his jersey in the rafters. It's Carey Price. So who, <laughs> no matter who you are, no matter who you cheer for, maybe not some some people, but like, Hearing that Carey Price is close to making a return is fantastic news. Can't I cannot wait. Yeah, Carey's Carey, right? I mean, he's just he's a franchise cornerstone. We drafted him and uh we miss him, right? We definitely miss him. He follows yeah. us on Instagram, no big deal. But um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Carey's a stud. He's just he's just he's just like your neighbor next door, like just in terms of the person himself. But the player, well, just you know, we know we know Carey is, and we've like seen a him giant a golden retriever. You just want him around all the time, and he's, <laughs> he's just loyal, and he's like a giant golden retriever. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I, I mean, he's a he's a he's got two dogs of his own for sure. So, um, but yeah, you know what? Like we just we, we're looking forward to it. It's been all season long, and for a team that's in last place, or I don't know if we're officially in last, or if it's Arizona, whatever. But no, we're still for, last. For, yeah, we're still last. And for, for this much positive to have been happening in the last month and a half, two months, pretty amazing that we get to have a show and have all these things to talk about. So um, let's let's uh, get to our last subject of the day. And uh, it's going to be interesting because I mean, we just had trade season. It was exciting. It was fun. Uh, Kent Hughes did not disappoint. So um, who should the Habs trade this summer? Who do you see as maybe being the next pieces to go? Uh, I know it's early. But we want to know from you fans also, we want you guys to chime in on this in the comments. So please do. Mm -hmm. And if you're liking this show, hit the thumbs up. Give us a like, please. We appreciate that. And um, subscribe. And subscribe if you want to see more, of course. But um, who do you guys who do you guys see as being pieces that could potentially be moved based on contract status, based on where this team is growing? They're getting younger. They want to get faster. Who do you see going this summer? Um, if you would have asked me a couple of weeks ago, my main one would have been Armia. Because let's all be honest, Armia signs his new contract and has not been performing to what we know he can. It's It's been disappointing to watch. But in the last four to five games, he's turned it around. He's You can see him on the ice. He's getting shots on net. He's hitting. He's using his body. He's scoring. He's passing. He is playing like Yoel Armia is supposed to play. So... Mm -hmm. We already know that he's very streaky. So this happens for a few games. He disappears for 29 games. So 
he's still a bit on my list of players that could be moved, depending if the price is right, like Kent always says. Mm -hmm. um, if he keeps playing like he's playing right now, I wouldn't move him because he's a perfect maybe third or fourth liner. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, Shane, I know you're going to touch on this quickly, but for us, it was Mike Hoffman and Jeff Petrie. We know that yeah. Jeff Petrie's not happy in Montreal. He did ask to be traded, and Kent said, if the price is right, we will move him. The organization is not in a bad spot with Jeff Petrie right now, but whatever happened with his family, he wants to be back home, and right now being out for an unknown amount of time, it is going to impact. Is he just going to go back to Michigan and stay there? For me, that's what I'm thinking. I think he played his last game in Montreal, but remains to be seen. As for Mike Hoffman, uh, he's having a tough time lately. I don't know what's going on. I mean, don't count yesterday's shootout goal and the two posts. But I really don't know what to do with Mike Hoffman because he's either 100% all in or he's – I don't even know what he's doing. Yeah. It's it's a tough call. You know, we, we've traded most of the pieces that needed to be traded. Yeah. Right. Uh, ben Sherratt needed to be traded. Kent actually said that, which is crazy because we're not used to it. But, uh, you know, we're looking at the guys who are, you know, out of a contract. Tyler Pitlick, who we've only seen play what, a game and a half, not even a game in a period. So we don't know what's going to happen with him. Uh, Mathieu Perrault was uh, put in on waivers. He passed. So does the team want him? That remains to be seen. Laurent Dauphin is without a contract, and he's proved himself, so he could actually get some money elsewhere if we don't give it to him. Um, Chris Weidman is also out of a contract. Could he find somewhere else? Could we find a way to trade him? It, it, there's a lot of pieces that could be moved, but no one that really stands out except for Jeff Petrie. I mean, Kent has said it multiple times, which is, again, weird to hear, but we do appreciate the communication. Jeff will be moved like that. He wants somewhere in the States uh, with his family, a deal that works for both teams and plenty of teams would use a guy like Jeff Petrie. He is a steady second option. Um, we've seen him behind Weber for years and he performed well in that situation. So I would not be surprised if a team paid for paid to get Jeff Petrie this summer. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about inevitable at this point that Petrie is going to be moved as long as the right pieces can come back. That's, it. that's what it sounds like is going to happen. And that's yeah. a lot of cap uh, off, off the books for Montreal, oh, yeah. right? I mean, that's going to be 6.25 million off the cap for the next three seasons if they are able to pull it off. And it sounds like, it sounds like Ken Hughes is going to do everything in his power to do that. So don't Michael, keep in mind too. Sorry. Keep in mind that yeah. if, um, Kent is able to trade Weber's contract, or if Weber retires, we have that cap coming off too. Yeah, that was crossing you know? my mind as you were as a. That's going to be yeah. a key part of what we're going to do this summer. We've talked about this on the show before. Can we attract stars to come to Montreal now that we have key pieces that are coming up with Martin Saint Louis and all the changes in the organization? Yeah, you know, it's it's giving us space to to sign someone who wants to come to Montreal, and I think that's going to be something we need to keep an eye on i think it is and also uh again like i mean i'm not rushing anybody out the door but we want to know what's happening with carrie's contract too and i think we'll get that at some point but we're not going to go there right now i know don't don't worry um but, but for me yeah for me I, i'm just thinking about players that are going to be part of this long-term restructuring whatever you want to call it for this team and uh i don't know that i see army as part of it but i i don't know who he can place him with right now i don't know if yolonen's ready to take the jump i mean army is pretty established in his game right now and if he is playing yeah. better then i'm all for keeping him we have him for another three seasons as well paul byron has two years left on his deal uh which i thought was interesting well, actually one year after this year so yeah. and then like i'm even i'm even looking at next trade deadline like you know paul byron is going to be up jonathan druin is going to be up so like there's just there's a lot of question marks i think christian dvorak is part of the solution going forward personally i've been very happy with his game lately oh, yeah. uh that yeah. tying goal um, that pass to rem Pitlick last night Ooh. was a thing of beauty but also on the face-offs like face dvorak yeah. is money in the face-offs right now for me yeah 80 percent um, yesterday yeah so i think kind of uh, like a manny manholtra on the <laughs> face-off <laughs> manny yeah but like uh, more talented you know just more skill yeah yeah so <laughs> Um, I'm looking at guys like our, like our, the people that come to mind that I think they're are going to move are definitely Petrie. I'm, I'm questioning our Mia. Um, I think we know guys that are going to be without a contract like Matthew Perot, for example, uh, players like him, but 
when it comes down to it, I, I'm qu I'm questioning what you know. Hoffman is definitely on that list. So to me, it's Hoffman, Armia, Petrie. Um, those are those are my biggest question marks right there. Or, or definitely, we know at least two or three of those are, those guys are going to go because Mike Hoffman is kind of one one dimensional. So that's where for me. I've kind of seen enough, and I, I just I know that Mark Bergevin signed Mike Hoffman out of necessity. We needed scoring, and uh, we didn't even have access to him at the beginning of the season when things were really rough. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, he's been fine overall. Point production's there. You know, he's doing what he does, but but he the can puck, be replaced without the puck. I just I can't. I, I think I want to see more, and uh, I think there's other guys that will give us more. All right. Yeah. So that being said, guys. Um, you know, I, I mentioned like and subscribe, so please do so. Give us your thoughts on on any part of the show that you want to. We did mention mm -hmm. that we want you to comment on who else you think the Habs should start looking at parting with this summer. But uh, we have a whole bunch of subjects that we went through today, so feel free to chime in on any of those. And you guys got Autour de la Ligue coming tonight as well? Sure do. Live at 7 p.m. There it is. And for everybody who is commenting, this is in English. This is, is this in French? Yes, it is a fully French segment. <laughs> uh we've been getting a lot of comments on that so for all the french fans you're more than welcome to join in english too if you want but we will be speaking french throughout the whole show yeah and that's the beauty of the show is that we have access to to bring you both and and, and you guys yeah. do such a great job of that so thank you for that and to our french fans as thank well you. bonjour hello merci for for joining in on that um if you want to Putin. Oh yeah, Putin. Sorry. Yeah, that, that, my accent's so bad. But uh, also, one more thing we'll throw in there. Uh, don't forget to get your merch if you guys want. As you can see, we're all rocking merch. And uh, that, this is probably my favorite. It's just our logo. I just really like our logo. So I'm biased, maybe. But uh, that's that's what you can grab if you want at HabsTonight.net. And is the promo code still on Habsitivity, or did we just finish that one? No, I haven't taken it off yet. <laughs> all right. Still 20% <laughs> off available for you guys if you like. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. As always, we appreciate it. It's always fun to jump on. It's been a heck of a finish to the season so far. We're not done yet, but uh, we've had a lot to talk about despite Montreal being in last place. So thank you, and we'll see you on the next one, guys.